Today, we're gonna to wrap up our video series on mistakes your driver recruiters need to avoid. If you missed the first two installments, I'll leave some links for you down in the description below. And to make sure you don't miss out on any of our upcoming content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell and maybe even leave us a comment. Now, let's jump right in to some more common mistakes your recruiters need to avoid. Assuming experience equals competence. A recruiter can have a million conversations, but if they continuously make the same mistakes, they'll never actually get any better. Let's think about it by breaking things down into two zones, the learning zone and the performance zone. The learning zone is all about trying to practice, improve, and grow your knowledge, while the performance zone is more about focusing on what you know and executing to accomplish the goal at hand. The problem is most recruiters tend to stay in the performance zone. They focus on the end goal without ever thinking about how they could possibly improve. It doesn't matter if a recruiter has five years of experience if they stop learning after year one. Provide your recruiters with opportunities to grow and spend time in the learning zone to avoid falling into the mistake of simply assuming that experience equals competence. Low engagement with drivers scheduled for orientation. Your recruiter's job doesn't end after scheduling a driver for orientation. Industry averages tell us that 15 to 20% of drivers who are scheduled for an orientation will fail to show up. A huge factor in this is the failure of recruiters and by proxy, the fleets they represent following up with those drivers that have been scheduled. Remember, you're not the only game in town and drivers rarely, if ever, only speak to one fleet when looking for a new job. Getting a driver to the point of scheduling and orientation is great, but the game isn't won until that driver is onboarded and in one of your trucks. Maintaining consistent contact with the driver helps your fleet ensure that prospects stay actively engaged throughout the recruiting and orientation process. Using multiple channels and tools available, such as phone calls, text messaging, and emails in regular intervals can help your recruiters easily accomplish this. In addition, an email sequence can be automated to feed the driver information and tasks to better inform and help them prepare for the orientation and hiring process. Failing to prioritize more engaged and qualified leads. One of the most difficult aspects for driver recruiters to master is learning how to prioritize their time. Each prospective driver must be gauged based on their qualifications and interest or engagement. Each time a prospect is contacted, it provides an important interaction for the recruiter to analyze. Prioritize those who meet the required qualifications and show genuine interest over those who are less engaged. Identifying drivers who are not yet a good fit for your fleet earlier in the process can help recruiters know where their limited time is best spent. Treat all leads fairly, not equally. Encourage your recruiters to take advantage of the systems you have in place to stay organized, maintain tasks, and efficiently work through the leads provided to them. Not asking for referrals or asking for referrals without earning it. Do you know what one of the best sources for a new driver is? Other drivers. A satisfied fleet driver or even a satisfied and engaged prospect can be a fantastic potential source for other driver leads and referrals. But actually getting to the point of asking for a referral is where most recruiters have trouble. If recruiters push for referrals for other drivers before fully taking care of the driver they're working with, that driver can feel neglected or worse, used. Asking for referrals shouldn't be forced and should only occur naturally within a conversation. On the flip side, there's the problem of not asking for referrals at all. If a driver's needs are taken care of and his or her concerns have been addressed, most are happy to refer other prospective drivers to the recruiter. Failing to take advantage of this resource is a mistake. It's a fine line and takes practice to know exactly when and how to initiate this conversation, but it can prove to be quite a successful technique given time and practice. On average, around 20% of a fleet's hires are a result of referrals. These referral hires also tend to be the cheapest hires available to you. That is a huge resource for your fleet and your recruiters must take advantage of it. And that's gonna do it for our series on mistakes your driver recruiters need to avoid. The previous videos are all, of course, available both on YouTube and our blog, and I'll leave direct links to them in the description below. Remember, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but it is comprised of the most common mistakes we see made all the time. If you have any questions on any of the mistakes we talked about today or in the previous videos, you can reach out to us and let us know. We'll see you back here next Wednesday with a brand new video. And if you just can't wait until then, there's plenty of other videos, articles, and other great information available over at RandallRiley.com.